Hello everybody and a warm welcome to today's webinar in conjunction with jobs.ac.uk on the topic of networking post-COVID. My name is Dr Vary Towler and I will be taking you through the session today and giving you some strategies for building your network and why it's important to do so. Many things have changed post-COVID and we're now back to face-to-face -face networking in the main but the world of virtual networking exploded during the pandemic and there are elements of this that we can still benefit from. So I have some insights to share with you about that today. There will be a chance to ask questions at the end at the live Q&A session and you can use the Q&A button for this, which is a speech bubble with a question mark inside, or you can just use the chat box. So first of all, I'll tell you a bit about my own background and why I've gained a lot of experience in networking. I trained as a scientist and I have a degree in biochemistry and a PhD in molecular and cell biology. I then went out to do postdoctoral work at the University of California in San Francisco and came back to Dundee to do further postdoctoral work. At the same time, I completed a postgraduate certificate in teaching and learning in higher education. And as part of this, I got to use animation as part of my teaching practice. So I decided to retrain in animation and visualisation with a view to setting up my business, which is called Vivo Motion. We help scientists communicate what they do using animation and graphics. I'm a mum of twins and last year I launched a new podcast called Opportunities in Science, which highlights different career paths after studying a degree in science. So because I now run my own business, I'm always attending networking events to profile my business and have joined a number of business and academic networks. Um, and I'd like to share some insights with you from these experiences today. So these are the topics that we're going to cover today. What is networking? Why should we network? Networking opportunities for you and strategies for building your own network and also how to network online using social media, which is just a huge opportunity for you. <clears throat> so here's a quote from the Harvard Business Review about your network. One of the biggest assets in anyone's life is a generous network. And one take home message from this statement is that you should think about how you can contribute or give back to your own network. So you might call upon people within your network for their help and advice, but equally you should think about how you might be able to help someone else. And perhaps as you become more senior in your career, you will be able to give back to students or peers, just as some of your network um, might be helping you now. So what does networking mean? Well, the word networking does bring to mind certain words such as dread, fear, daunting, making people nervous and scared. How does it make you feel? You can put your answer in the chat box now. Let's see how networking makes people feel. <clears throat> Any thoughts in the chat box? nothing coming through at the moment. <laughs> it might take you a moment to put it in. Um, however, if you do feel scared about networking or nervous, I'd like you to change your mindset on this and think about networking as a way to make mutually beneficial connections and a way to build your value and build your community. You also have to remember that you have something of value to offer your network with your knowledge, skills and expertise, and people are just as lucky to be meeting you as you are of meeting them. So this is the definition of networking. It's the building and maintaining of relationships with a wide range of individuals, groups or institutions who share common interests, goals or expertise. And it's about building relationships and connections which can be utilised for everyone's benefit. The characteristics of networking are that it's people centred. It's about people and forming relationships. It should be purposeful and planned. So if you're going to be attending a conference or an event, try to get the attendee list ahead of time and decide who you would like to meet. Then at the coffee break, you can seek that person out for a chat. It's not about using people but using the information that they give you. And when you ask people for their help and advice, they're only us usually too willing to give it. With networking, it's about who knows you that's important and raising your profile in whichever sector or field you're working in. So why network? 
Well, networking allows you to build relationships within your own organisation. It might result in you being invited to speak at a conference or an event. If you are thinking of changing career, um, it might help you to get your next job. It might be that you're looking to find new partners to collaborate with. Maybe they're in a different discipline to what you're working in at the moment. You could just be seeking moral support from others who are at the same um, career stage as yourself. Or maybe you're just looking for new opportunities. Your network is going to be the most important thing when it comes to progressing your career. If you are looking for your next job or promotion, it's who knows about you and your expertise that's going to get you that position. I got my first postdoc position as a result of attending a conference and that led me to going to live in San Francisco for four years. So try to take opportunities if you can to attend events and conferences as you never know where it might lead. So how to make your network work for you? Well, first of all, you need to identify what your goals are. What do you want to achieve? Is it that you're looking for a collaborator, perhaps someone who works in a different discipline, or maybe you're looking for your next job? You need to determine this at the beginning. What are you trying to achieve? What information do you need? And importantly, who do you know who knows this or might know someone who knows this? What do you have to do to get this information? Is it asking someone for 15 minutes of their time over a virtual coffee? Or do you want to meet someone face to face at a conference? Who can help you to develop your network? Well, um, you can ask senior colleagues about events um, or conferences that they know about or your peers um, and see what, what events and conferences they're going to that you might also want to attend. You can join relevant societies and sign up for their newsletters and that way you can keep informed of events that are happening. You can think about events um, you can attend within your university. So is there a PhD postdoc or research staff association that you can attend to build connections locally within your setting? And what events are going on locally outside the university or internationally? What conferences could you attend? And finally, could you join a researcher network? So Dr Nicola Palmer from Sheffield Hallam University said, research networks exist in a multitude of forms at a range of scales with a variety of purposes and membership sizes. So there are new and established researcher networks, institutionally based networks, external multi-organisational networks, departmental level subject area specific and interdisciplinary networks and networks of differing sizes and demographics. So some examples of these that I know about personally include the Early Career Researcher Network at the British Academy for those in the arts and humanities, VITI who cover many aspects of researcher development, as do PROSPER which is a researcher hub based at the University of Liverpool, XNET is a new one who connects cross-disciplinary researchers at different career stages and reveals career opportunities to STEM researchers. And this is just a handful that I know about. So if anybody knows of any other researcher networks, please do um, contribute in the chat box um, for everybody to benefit from. Thank you. So at conferences and events, if you are um, attending a conference or an event, then try to engage on Twitter. Quite often um, they'll have a Twitter wall at a conference and this is a great way to get yourself noticed um, as somebody who's commenting and has an opinion about a various, um, various topics that are being discussed. You can apply to speak or present a poster. Um, at a conference. So don't um, wait to be invited. Be proactive about this if you can um, and you know, take those opportunities if they're there. Um, ask to give a talk at another university. So maybe when you're at a conference, you meet somebody who's from another university. Um, say, you know, invite yourself to come and give a talk. OK, you're having to give up your time and maybe you have to pay your travel expenses. But again, it's a good way to get your research known at another university, especially if you're looking to progress there um, in the future for your career. Um, find out who's going um, to conferences and events ahead of time. As I said, um, you need to target people with your networking. So if there's somebody you're desperate to talk to, you really want to talk to them about your work, um, then try and target them at the conference. 
when you go to a conference, don't just stick with your own group. Uh, the reason that I've put this is that when I used to go to conferences with um, the lab that I worked in, it was quite a big lab. So at coffee and lunch, we ended up all sticking together. And as a result, we never branched out and we didn't make new connections in different labs. So try to be um, more of a social butterfly and um, give yourself a target maybe of meeting three new people at each coffee break or lunch break. Ask questions when there's a chance to do so. Again, it's a way of getting yourself noticed and consider attending events outside your own sector. So sometimes when you attend um, an, an event at a different, you know, maybe in a business sector, for example, it gives you ideas for your own um, area of research or expertise. So here are some strategies for building your network. Um, try to promote your work on social media if you can. Um, this is a, a big opportunity now and um, you know there's lots of different social media sites. I'll talk about this in a moment. Um, if you have a website, that's great. Um, but again, it's a, a way of um, profiling yourself on the, on the web. Um, keep in touch with previous contacts. So in this one, I've put um, nurture your network. Um, and this is so that, you know, you're not just always getting in touch with people to ask them for something. Um, you can also just get in touch to say, I'd like to catch up here how you're getting on. And this can be face to face or now, um, you know, with the advent of Teams and Zoom, we can do this really easily virtually. And it only takes somebody, you know, 15, 20 minutes of, out of their day. So it's a much easier way to network um, than previously post um, pre-COVID. You can join committees, societies and associations. Um, this one has to be taken um, seriously in terms of the relevance of the committees or societies, because obviously they can become a bit of a drain on your time. Um, so think about these ones carefully um, before you join um, committees. Um, you can map your contacts out um, on a big piece of paper, both personal and professional. Um, it's quite interesting how quite often people in your personal life can actually help you with your professional progression. So, um, you know, do have a look at that and, and see where you can make connections. Attend conferences and events, um, as I've said. Again, make sure they're ones that are relevant to what you're looking to do. And then one tip um, which is really useful is to turn up early or leave late. So if you're the first person in the room at a networking event, um, you, the next person who comes in has to talk to you um, and you're not the person that's then entering a room trying to break up a group of people or trying to get yourself in on a group. Um, it also gives a chance sometimes to um, have an opportunity to, to chat with the speaker if there's a speaker at the event. Um, and it's the same if you leave late. If you stay around at the end, you might get a chance to speak one to one with um, speakers from the event. So it's a really good strategy. Um, also follow up with new connections. So if you meet somebody at an event and they give you a, a business card, for example, make sure that you follow up um, lo um, link in with them on LinkedIn and just send them a little note saying how you've enjoyed meeting them at um, a such and such event. Using social media to network um, is a huge um, opportunity for us. So maybe you're looking for a new role and making a, a new connection will help you with this. You can use um, LinkedIn to talk about your work. I think LinkedIn and Twitter are really good for the academic world. Um, and yeah, you can talk about your work and what you're doing. Um, and believe me, good things will happen with this. Um, you need to consistently show up on social media, which helps you to build your personal brand. It lets people get to know you, the person behind you, um, your work and your values. Um, you may not be big on self-promotion and using social media, but if you want to get noticed, you need to get over yourself and know that only people who are really interested in what you have to say are going to read your posts. So join in important conversations that are happening within your sector to establish yourself as an expert. It's a massive opportunity to connect and the algorithm, algorithms that are out there deliver information that's of interest to you. So if you start following somebody who's of interest to you and you comment on their posts, then their posts will show up more regularly on your feed. And did you know that Generation Z are now using TikTok as a search platform rather than using Google? So if you do want to engage with younger people, then TikTok's where it's at. But I have to confess that so far I haven't made any TikToks. 
So what three actions can you take um, today to grow your network? Is it going to be using social media more often and making social media um, making a social media strategy to try to get yourself noticed and profile the work that you're doing? Is it that you're going to reconnect with someone from your network, someone you used to work with perhaps in a previous role and just get in touch and say you'd like to have a catch up and that you'd like to have a virtual coffee with them over Zoom or Teams for 15 minutes? Or maybe you can connect with someone um, on the call today or who you've met through LinkedIn. Um, a good thing to do is just have a think about this at the start of each week, uh, Monday morning. What are you going to do this week um, to build your network? So to summarise um, <clears throat> what we've spoken about, a strong network is going to be really important in terms of building your career, building your personal brand, getting yourself and your work noticed and profiled out there and building your value and your community. It's a way of supporting others as well, and you can contribute to your network in lots of different ways. You can find additional content. There's going to be a recording of the webinar available from jobs.ac.uk and you'll be emailed a link after today when that's been published. There are more career resources available at careers-advice.jobs.ac.uk and you can also follow um, jobs.ac.uk on social media. They have Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram and Facebook. So thank you very much for listening. Please do link in with me or follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, I'd love to have a virtual chat with any of you who want to have a virtual chat. Um, and we'll now move on to the Q&A section. Now, you can use the Q&A button for this, which is a speech bubble with a question mark inside, or you can use the chat box. Um, we were fortunate enough to have um, some questions that were um, submitted ahead of time. So I'm just going to stop sharing my slides here and I'll go through some of these questions that were um, sent ahead of time whilst the rest of you are thinking about um, questions that you might want to put into the chat box or the Q&A. So the first one was, how is networking now different to pre-COVID? So face-to-face -face networking is more or less the same, but we are now more likely to use hand sanitizer um, before we eat anything, especially if we've been shaking hands with lots of people. So I think we're all a bit more aware um, about hygiene. Also, there's more of an opportunity to ask someone for a virtual meeting. As I said, this is much easier to schedule than a face-to-face -face meeting and it involves a lot less time. So if you do want to speak to somebody, um, just contact them directly directly and ask them for a virtual meeting. And people are perhaps more reluctant to attend events now in person due to the logistics of planning and time. Um, I do find this myself that I have to kind of motivate myself to go to face-to-face -face events. How and where should you start to network in academia when you have no connections? So with this one, um, I would start by asking your colleagues about what conferences and events you should be attending and those that are relevant for your field of interest. Also find out who the big players are in your discipline. Try to attend these conferences and events in person. Also, you can look out for events that are happening within your university that are of, that are of interest to you. And also search on LinkedIn and Twitter for hashtags of interest and for individuals of interest. Start to follow them, um, comment on their posts and engage with discussions. So the third question that we had was, do you have any additional advice for students who have additional needs or disabilities in terms of networking? So first of all, you need to determine who you would like to meet or talk to and follow them on LinkedIn and Twitter, engage with their posts, then contact them and let them know that you're going to be at a particular conference or event and you'd like to have a chat with them there. Um, equality, diversity and inclusivity is high on all of the university's agendas now and therefore you shouldn't come up against bias. But if you do, then perhaps you might reconsider if you want to be working with someone who doesn't appreciate and value you and your qualities. You have as many qualifications as the next person, so own them. And one other thing about events and conferences are that they should cater for people um, who might have um, extra additional needs or disabilities in terms of accessibility. 
The next question was, um, due to the pandemic, I found that people have learned to be distant and have lost the way of interacting. Is there a way we can fix this and improve communication skills? So I do empathise with this, um, and particularly for attending events face to face. I find it difficult when things went back um, to face to face to motivate myself to go. So first of all, it was difficult to fit it in around childcare. I had to organise logistics for this. And again, um, secondly, we got out of the habit of making small talk and I had to work hard to make natural conversation. So it does come back with practice. So the sooner that you get out there and practice, the better and the less awkward it feels the next time. So have a few questions up your sleeve for when, um, for when you first interact with someone. Basic things such as, have you travelled far? Isn't it a lovely day? Which university do you work at? What is your area of expertise? Um, networking does come with practice um, and I like to try and find some common ground as well. But I try to keep it professional um, rather than personal initially until you get to know somebody a bit better. Um, the next question was, um, how do you leave a long lasting impression during networking with clients or potential employers? So I think long lasting impressions can be made if you actively listen to a person when they are speaking. Show interest in what they are saying by asking questions, keeping eye contact and nodding. In addition to showing interest to what they say, have something interesting to say for yourself. So someone once said to me, be interested and interesting. It's also good to come across as professional. So if you have a business card to hand over, they will find it later in their pocket and remember you. Also try to follow up with connections made using LinkedIn or sending them a follow up email saying you had enjoyed meeting with them. And the other thing to note now is that on LinkedIn, there is a function on your phone where you can tap to, to link in with somebody if you meet them. So if you don't have a business card, that's a nice digital way of doing it. You can also get digital business cards that you can tap onto somebody's phone and it immediately transfers your details. The final um, question that was submitted ahead of time was for international networking. There's quite a lot of questions around how do do people do this if they're in another country and they want to come to a different country? So with this one, try to find international events, whether they're online or in person, and try and get yourself in front of the company or person that you want to meet and ask questions. In addition, if you can find email contacts online, then send the person an email introducing yourself and why you're interested in meeting them and then request a virtual chat. Again, it really depends on what you're trying to achieve. So be clear on your goals. You don't want to just set up a meeting randomly with somebody and um, you want to have some purpose to that meeting. OK, so I'm just going to have a look in the meeting chat to see if there's any questions going on here. There's been quite a lot of things happening. Um, so good, there's a few people um, introducing themselves on here. Um, and putting their LinkedIn profiles, so that's brilliant. Um, just looking to see if there's any questions. How do you know if your networking and contacts collected will have good results? So, um, and how can I build confidence to network when being an, an introvert? So um, the results um, will come if you have defined what your goals are in the first place. So um, if you know what you're trying to achieve, then you will know whether or not you've achieved that result. Um, so that um, comes back to how to make your network work for you. The first one, how to define, you know, you need to define your goals. Um, so what is it that you want to achieve? And then if you want to build confidence to network, if you're if you're an introvert and you don't like going up to people and, and introducing yourself, um, remember that there will be other introverts in the room as well. Um, and you shouldn't see it as a, a barrier as such. You still have um, a lot of uh, value to offer in terms of, you know, building your own community, building your network, and you've got, you know, as much expertise as the next person. So just value what it is that you've got to offer in terms of a conversation with somebody. Um, I know it can be difficult to build up the confidence um, 
there's an organisation that I'm part of called Upfront. In fact, I'm wearing their necklace today, but you can't see it. It's, it's a U for Upfront. And they are a, a community um, for women in particular, but anybody who wants to build confidence. Um, and they're they're brilliant because they're just turning myths on their head about confidence. So I would have a look at Upfront um, if you're, you know, wanting to build confidence. Um, Somebody's asking, is there any tips for building up the LinkedIn? So again, this is about engaging with other people as well. So it's not just about putting your own posts up there, but liking and commenting on other individuals um, posts. And then that way um, they, they'll end up following you and getting interested in you as well. I am in search of placement as part of my master's degree. How do I go about my search and build network within relevant departments? So I would start within your university for that person um, and um, ask your supervisor um, about opportunities for placements. They should be able to give you information about that. So when I was doing a master's degree in animation and visualisation, we were given a list of organisations that we could choose from to do our placement with. Um, so I think I would start internally with that one. Um, Helen has said, I feel like whenever I try to network on LinkedIn, I just get inundated with people trying to sell me SEO services. Is there a polite way of turning down requests like these or is it acceptable just to ignore contact requests that I don't think interest me? Um, yes, so I often get that as well, Helen. And to be honest, if there's somebody that I don't know or I've never met, um, I just I don't always accept their um, request to connect on LinkedIn. Um, it depends. I have a look at their profile. I see what it is that their interests are. And if it just looks like a salesperson who is trying to sell me something that I don't want, then it's absolutely fine just to ignore them. Um, Emily James is saying, what are some good places for networking internationally? Is it better to seek out specific country sites or global forums? Um, there are, you know, there are global networking um, organisations, so you could join up to one of those. Um, and then the other thing is, um, again, it's thinking about, well, why do you want to um, network internationally? Um, it's probably, again, thinking about your own specific area that you're working in and seeking out the relevant international conferences that run, um, that talk about, you know, that particular topic. It's difficult for me to know, um, Emily, I think it's saying something that you're in education maybe, but um, I would just do some research online for that one and seek out which conferences are international. Um, and then if you want to you know, apply for those, then go for it. OK, so I think that's all the questions in the Q&A. Um, just let me have a look. Um, oh, is there any etiquette around networking approaches with people who are much more senior? Um, yeah, this is something, again, that I used to come up with um, against when I was, um, you know, going to conferences in the science world. There would be a sort of certain group of um, PI, so principal investigators who would, you know, kind of mill about together at the coffee break. Um, but again, if you do want to talk to somebody, um, there's nothing to stop you just um, interrupting and introducing yourself. Um, again, just say, you know, politely, could I have a minute of your time? I just wanted to introduce myself. I work on such and such and I'm really interested in your work. Um, so just try to find a moment where, you know, they don't look like they're you know, engaged in some sort of very important conversation. Um, you could also ask um, your own supervisor um, to introduce you to other um, principal investigators. So that's another strategy so that you don't feel quite so awkward just launching up to somebody who you don't know. Um, if you can get somebody else to introduce you, that's um, a nice strategy. OK, um, I think. That is all of the questions at the moment. I'm um, just going to go back to the chat box because I think there was something in there. Somebody just said, could you remind us the names of the networks, please? You mentioned them at the beginning. Yeah, so there's um, the Early Career Researchers Network through the British Academy. There's one called Xnet. I'll just put that into the chat. Um, British Academy. Again, it depends on um, what your 
Um, where we could you? Sorry if there's typos in these. Um, Vitae, what your discipline is. So Prosper, Upfront is another one. Um, ah, social Sciences. Um, maybe the British Academy one would be OK for you, Agatha. I'm not sure. You'd have to have a quick look. I think they do cover Social Sciences as well. Um, Oh yeah, Hazel's putting in weareupfront.com, that's it. Thanks, Hazel. Um, so yeah, if you have a look for these ones, um, but again, these are just a handful that are out there. So um, I'll see if I can just quickly uh, find the Xnet one, because it's a good one. Or maybe somebody from Xnet is in the, is in the meeting, actually, I'm not sure. Um, OK. So I think that's all the questions for now. So thank you very much for coming along today. If there was a question um, that I didn't answer, you know, just get in touch with me or um, email it to jobs.ac.uk and they can um, forward it to me and we can come up with an answer um, between us. But thank you very much, everybody. Good luck with your networking. I hope you enjoyed the session today and have a lovely afternoon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.